Hello, everybody! Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome, one and all. Wow, well, it's been a while, but we are back with Game Squad 6. Yeah, setting up a new home office and a uh, new house is a lot of hard work, along with managing a life and a two-year-old. But whatever, we're back in the realm of the dead. I've been looking forward to this part for so long because it's one of my favorite conversations in the game is talking to the Lord of the Underworld. But first, I mentioned last time that I was kind of bummed that you couldn't actually die in the river sticks like you couldn't touch it and turn into bones well it turns out i was trying too hard alexander slips off the banks and plunges into the river sticks as the black water comes into contact with his skin alexander feels himself going numb from the legs up he sinks like a stone tickets up Next. Hey, hey, what a fix. Bathing in the river sticks. Love it. Okay. And I also did try, again, to the comments recommendation, trying to slow down the game enough that it would allow him, uh, this guy who says, like, tickets, uh, you know, and that he would say his entire line, but no dice. I'll try it in DOSBox later. I'm running it in Scum right now because I have a better time getting it to work with my uh, Roland MT32. Excuse me, I'd like an audience, please. The shrouded guards escort Alexander to the throne of the Lord of the Dead. Well, that was easy. I thought I had to talk you into it. Why have you entered my domain, still wearing your flesh? Bink. If you are so anxious for death, you might have found it easily enough in the land of the living. But since you are here, you are most welcome to stay. Kiss my hand, and you will be one with the spirits. There will be no pain. So, actually, a very generous offer. You know, I you come down here, you're basically going to fight an unwinnable battle here. So, if you just give up now, it'll be painless. It's fine. So, this is the Lord the of Death. The will to live is strong, is it not? Never mind. I will reach out to you. I'm the chosen one. The Lord you touched of the Dead's me. touch fills Alexander instantly with a numbing cold and blackness. Well, oh. Death waits for no man. I forgot about that one. A nice little special game over. With some special game over music. Love it. Hey, and if you ever wanted an empty portrait just for uh, photoshopping reasons, there it is. All right, well, we don't have much of a chance to take a look at death or play around with him, so business it is. Why don't I just, like, just walk up? I'm going to force my way in. Urgh. The servants of the Lord of the Dead don't seem particularly touchable, and Alexander has no desire to engage the black-cloaked figures in a fight. Fine, I don't need your permission. Ugh. Alexander approaches the throne of the Lord of the Dead. Why have you if you right, kiss? Well, whatever. Okay, so let's take a look around before I get deaded. The Lord of the Dead is a huge, grotesque figure. Thanks. He and his throne are one, grown together over the centuries till he can no longer move. Chains further bind him, pinning him to his endless, weighty task. If he was once human, as the druids claimed, Alexander can see no sign of it in his merciless, fathomless eyes. Just one of the most intriguing characters. With trembling knees, Alexander stands before the Lord of the Dead. Beyond death and his throne, Alexander can sense the multitude of spirits in the Sea of Souls. So let me pause it here so I don't, you know, die. But yeah, this is the Lord of the Dead, who the druids claim was once human, but is now bound uh, to this chair. He cannot move. And he's been here for so long that this entire, pretty much he and this entire realm are one. Like this crown that he's wearing and this like little flowing chair and everything is the realm of the dead. He is the realm of the dead. And I think that is so intriguing. His arms are wrapped up like a mummy. His chest is like stitched together. His, his legs are completely bony from 
I guess from atrophy, I guess he can't really use them. All he can move is his arms. I really want to know his backstory. I think they talk about his backstory a little bit and how he ended up chained down here, but I can't remember. Let's see if we can't uncover it. Okay, fine. So literally the only thing we can do here without instantly dying, well, instantly meaning a couple of seconds, is we have the gauntlet and we this is the only way that we can challenge death. This is like the key to challenging death. The gauntlet is made of black iron and has a message inscribed upon it. Flesh may cross the portal and seek its master, Death. Flesh may go where Death has trod and challenge, like Scheherazade, he who reigns beneath the sod to spare a mortal's breath. So, long and short of it, we are allowed to cross the threshold of Death and challenge him to free a mortal soul. And the, this gauntlet is the only way that we can know that? All right, let's literally throw down the gauntlet in front of Death himself. I did not come here to die, but to demand my right of challenge. I respectfully challenge thee, Death, by throwing down this gauntlet. Man may pass the portal and seek its master, Death. Man may pass where Death has trod and challenge like Scheherazade, he who reigns beneath the sod to spare a mortal's breath. He has the gauntlet! Who, what, who's that? Impossible! Impossible. Yeah, you guys are dead, you shut up. He challenges death. Hi, Tony. Who are you to challenge death? A man of flesh is all I need to be, my lord. You got balls. And what is it that you seek with this challenge? The soul of some dead maiden? I seek the souls of King Caliphim and Queen Alaria, the land of the Green Isles. You would save two human souls and emerge alive from this realm yourself? That shall be a difficult challenge indeed. The tomb does not open its doors lightly. Either all three of us leave, or none go. Accepted. Touch. Very well. <laughs> then let me think of an appropriate task. Ah, yes. I have it now. Your challenge is this. For thousands of years, I have sat upon this throne. I have heard every sad tale that can be told by human lips. I have seen tragedies that ended empires, injustices that defy reason, love that would light the very stars turn cold and hard. I have seen torments that cannot possibly be born, and yet must be for centuries. This thing I have never done. I have never shed a tear. Make me cry, thou man of flesh. That is my challenge. Make death cry? Sooner could he turn sea to stone, or fire to ice. All right, so this just, wow, just what a challenge this is. I love it. It makes my skin kind of crawl a little bit. This, literally the most cynical man, not cynical, but jaded man, I suppose, who's heard all of the worst stories mankind has yet to offer. Somehow, I guess everybody who dies comes here and has like a quick chit chat with death before moving on. And it's like, oh, this is the horrible thing that happened to me. And it's like, all right, well, go ahead. Thanks for telling me that, I, I guess. So you can tell him your sob story, but it's not going to mean it won't mean anything to him. A, a guy who's heard tales of murder that have ended empires and destroyed worlds and injustices that cannot ever be named. And you think your little lovesick story is going to phase him? No. Perhaps a tale of my love? There is nothing you could say of love that would make me cry, mortal. I have had Cleopatra and Helen of Troy stand before me, and they move me not. Your common desires mean nothing to me. Yeah, so that's not gonna do it. Maybe, where's my love poem? I saw my love poem, that'll just, that'll shake him to his core. Ah, oh, dang it, no. Well, fight death with a sight, that's what I say. Poetic justice. 
The scythe cannot threaten death himself. Hmm, they actually had a special thing for that. Interesting. What else can I use on him? Mint? I have this, my lord. That does not provoke my tears, mortal. Oh, so Mint didn't do it. How about an onion? Do I have an onion? That'll get some tears out of him. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Your time, like your life, has just run out, man of flesh. You have failed the challenge, and now you must pay the price of your arrogance. The Lord of the Dead's touch. Ah, yeah, we've Alexander seen all this before. Instant. Now, in a very, in, in a, not even a clever way, but in a brilliant way, you have this magic mirror. The mirror is only reflect. Beast's mirror consists of a piece of glass set into a decorative frame. The glass is unusually clear, and the image particularly true. I believe Beast explained it, but if you look into the mirror, it shows your, like, true self. Alexander examines Beast's mirror. You can't do it yourself, but I, I know there's a way that you could prove it to yourself, if, like, you're out and about and you click it on yourself, maybe? There's no time for that now. That won't help Alexander convince death of anything. Right, so I can't test it out now, but if we show death, his true self, or his past... Maybe that's what kind of explains his backstory a little bit. It's, uh, the, the effects are striking, so here. The only thing I think that can make you cry is your own story. If your existence has been all that you say it has, then truth alone shall be my sword. The mirror's surface swirls with darkness for a moment, then fills with images even blacker. Reflections of despair, of wailing souls, of shackles colder and more immutable than any forged by man, of a world of thirsts that can never be quenched. Alexander feels the mirror tremble in his grasp and is glad that he cannot see its face. But the Lord of the Dead is transfixed to the mirror, to the screening of his life. Things long forgotten are once more uncovered his enslavement to this throne while still a man, the years of watching misery and horror and growing ever more numb to it, the seep of his own humanity, the slow growth of a new thing altogether which became that which he is now. His is an existence that has no possibility of redemption, no end. The surrounding spirits draw away in pain the truth is so sharp, it stabs. So intense, it sears. Oh. Take it away. Make it stop. There it is. The mirror of truth cracks from the strain, and death sheds a single gray tear. Truth is indeed a terrible thing. I have worn this mantle for so long, I had forgotten its dreadful weight. You shall take the souls and leave as I agreed. You have been granted to stay from this inevitable reality. I almost envy you. Find the souls he has claimed, and bring them to me. King Caliphim and Queen Alaria, I presume. Your hero has won you a few more years of mortality. May your souls be more prepared for their rest when you return. Thank you, my lord. I hope that they will. And you, man of flesh, my steed shall take the three of you back to the land of the living. Tell her where it is you wish to go. Until we meet again then, I assure you, we will meet again. No offense, my lord. But I hope that will be many long years from now. It is never as long as you might wish, mortal. Now, be gone. Yes, my lord. Yeah, 
and another speedy trip back to the land of the living. Are you coming, Majesty? al Hazred's treachery must be handled carefully, Alexander. Alari and I must go gather our allies and form a plan. Watch over Kasima. Make sure she comes to no harm. We will return as soon as we can to take back all that has been stolen from us. I will keep her safe until your return. Thank you, son. Your love for our daughter must be deep indeed for you to have undertaken death itself for our sakes. Indeed. May we succeed in what awaits us, and live long together as a family. Well, that is one way, certainly, to win your, the love of your life's blessing from their parents is to, I don't know, rescue their immortal souls? Sure. All right, my new future father-in-law and mother-in-law, goodbye. So it's this point of the game where, not even part of the game, but like if I were putting myself into Alexander's shoes, even the king and queen's shoes, where my entire plan would fall apart because I'm so impulsive and impetuous that I would be like, fuck, we're alive now. Let's go. Let's go knock on the front door of the castle and take them down now. But they're like, no, we're back alive. Let's think this out. Let's gather our allies and then we'll make one big move together. So we have to wait a little bit longer. And I'm like, no, I want to do it now. But that's the biggest thing you can do to make sure you get the best ending in the game and make sure that Queen Alaria and King Califim are alive and relatively well before we proceed. And I believe at this point, we are approaching the point of no return, which means it's time to enter the castle and start our own little war from the inside while the king and queen are waging their war from the outside. Outside in, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a smart little plan. So I figure now's a good time as any to kind of go around and see how the world is doing before we don't have a chance to see them anymore at all. We do need to pay a visit to the pawn shop, however, one last time. Good day, Prince Alexander. And this is also a good chance to make sure that we have all the things that we need before going into the castle, because that's, uh, that's kind of it. Actually, on that note, is there anything here that we haven't looked at yet? We saw everything on the shelf. We saw the bears, all this stuff up here, the wings, skeleton. I think we've actually looked at everything. A small rusty hatchet seems permanently embedded in a log of wood. I lied. Alexander's mind races over the possibilities. Perhaps the bound duo is the local woodcutter's equivalent of the sword in the stone. Perhaps someday, somehow, someone will free that hatchet and become king of the forest. Then again, it could be just a rusty hatchet stuck in a log. Oh, come on, use your sense of romance and imagination. I can't really see that it's a log. I guess now I can see it. Like, there's the log and the hatchet kind of comes out in the, this way. I shall be king of forest. If Alexander wants anything from the... Oh, okay, fine. Can I talk to it? The hatchet and the log seem too preoccupied with each other to talk to Alexander. Oop, I won't disturb them. I'll leave them in peace. The lovers. Is this like an oar? A lady's hand mirror has been separated from its original trousseau and now gathers dust in the pawn shop shelves. All right, well, I can't have it, but interesting. What is this? I'm seeing, I see it now. I say, oh, we've seen everything. It's like, ooh, look at all the small new things. The pawn shop is a dimly... The pawn sh... The pawn sh... No, I can't. I can't, I can't look at this. Looks like a lifesaver. This looks like a bottle of some sort, but I guess those are just set dressing. Hello. How fare you, good merchant? I cannot complain. I hope your travels are treating you well, Prince Alex. I went to hell. How's your day been? All right, so we gave him back the tinder box. Uh, we've used the bird already. We've used, used, we've used the flirt. We've used the flirt. we used the tinder box. Now, I think if you go through the short ending of the game, which we will be covering eventually, but I, I want to show you like the, the right way to do it, then you can really see the juxtaposition between the awful and the, and the, the better. But uh, in the short version, you do not need the paintbrush. But in this version, we do. I think I'd like the painter's brush. Very good, Prince Alex. The painter's brush it is. May your painting go well. Feel free to bring back the brush at any time. Thank you. All right, let's go check out everybody one last time. See if anyone has anything new to say, if anything's changed before uh, the point of no return. How fare you, good merchant? Thankfully, I fare better than my business. My shop is as silent as the moon these days. <laughs> hey, look who's out and about. Are you fixing up the boat? Oh, are you in the hold? I didn't even know you could do that. Hello. The cargo bay is unlikely to hold anything of interest or have a very pleasant smell after months of dry docking. 
Alexander decides not to descend into the dark hole. I was actually just going to go and check on him, but it looks like he might actually be busy trying to get the fairy fixed up. Really? That would mean he won't answer the door. There he is. Oh, it's you. Come on in. How did you get from the hold in here so quickly? Is there a trap door? How goes it, Alexander? Uh, I guess no one knows this boat better than he does. What else can you tell me about the land? The Isle of the Beast? Well, that's it. Well, great conversation. Well, thanks again for your hospitality. Let's we'll see what's going on on the Isle of Wonder here. I wonder if um, Black Widow is kind of bitter about me tricking her. Oh, so there you are, handsome. What can I do for you now? Well, she seems pretty cool with everything. <laughs> Have you changed your mind? My offer of dead <laughs> wedlock is still open. All right. Well, well, she also did fix that loose string on there, so there's I can't do that again. Bye. Bookworm, are you still there? Alexander doesn't need anything more from Bookworm or his friends. Oh, can't even check in with them? What about Diphthong and Umlaut or whatever? Onomatopoeia? I want to see how Dangling Participle is doing. Well, it doesn't look like the queens are in any hurry to come up. I guess they got what they needed, so they have nothing else to do with me. Well, just so I don't leave the Isle of Wonder empty-handed. Alexander takes a bottle of milk from the milkweed bush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what, as long as we're here, again, so it doesn't feel like a wasted trip, there's one last spell we can cast. The little china teacup is made of fine porcelain. The teacup contains swamp ooze and water from the river Styx. And this is why we got the paintbrush. All right, so one cup of swamp ooze, river Styx water, and a black horse feather. Got, got, and got. Uh, add Styx water to cup. Done. Stir with horse feather. Apply to blank service with artist brush. Speak canta incantation over painting to materialize. Okay, so don't do it here. And in a very wily coyote way of solving problems, let's go right over here to the side. There we go. Here's a gigantic blank canvas just ready for us. So let's do it. So we just put the feather in the cup, it sounds like. Alexander dips the large black feather into the teacup and stirs the contents gently. I always thought that was a nice little touch. They animated that. To his amazement, the jet black color of the feather slowly drains from end to tip into the teacup. The teacup mixture blackens and thickens to a paint-like consistency. Alexander carefully puts it away, discarding the drained feather. I would have kept that as a little souvenir. I also would have thought that the, uh, the teacup liquid would have been black anyway because of the river Styx water, but... Uh... I don't know. Maybe after it's separated, it looks just clear. Well, along with the swamp muck or ooze, whatever it is. All right, let's get a painting. To paint something, Alexander must first choose a location where he wants to paint. The paint can then be used on that location. That seems pretty straightforward. All right. Feeling artistically inspired, Alexander decides to make use of the large blank castle wall. Alhazred socks. Ah, a doorway. Just what Alexander was thinking this wall needed. And I believe this is the point of no return, because if we cast the spell on this doorway and make it real, then in all honesty, it should stay. But I think after you pass through it, it's like, all right, spell's over. Bye. Find out in a minute. With trepidation, Alexander gathers his strength for the enchantment of the painted door. Magic paint, black as ink, bring to life what I think. Make it real what I draw, according to this spoken law. The spell worked. The door has magically solidified. You figure it would just be a hole in the wall now, but no, they, uh, this spell actually went through the effort of making like oaken planks and cast iron fittings and hinges. Hinge pins? Wow. A very real-looking door now exists in the castle wall. Just for me. Eager to be inside the castle at last, Alexander opens the enchanted door and steps inside. 
Yep, there it goes. The magic paint door fades back into the wall. So much for an easy exit. All right. Now this this part is kind of stressful. I don't think there's like any immediate danger. I think every once in a while a guard might come around and it'll say, oh god, there's a guard coming. You better hide. So we do. But uh, there's actually a lot to do in here and this kind of oppressive music always makes you feel like something is going to go wrong at any moment. The ceilings in the castle are vaulted and formal, giving the halls a lofty elegance. Even though this is just the basement, they still vault the ceilings. The castle basement is cool after the heat of the day. The arched domed ceilings add to the sense of spaciousness in the wide corridors. On the east wall are three dungeon doors. This is the west basement hallway. The floor does not respond. The hallway does not reply. Psst! Anyone in there? The dungeon cell is empty. There is no reply. Well, maybe I can just save our hazard some time and just throw myself in the dungeon. Alexander opens the dungeon door and slips inside. And that's it. Game over. No, that's okay. I think if you do get caught, you do get thrown in here. And I think there is one get out of jail free card, like Jallo Rescue Zoo or something. I don't remember, but I think it's one time and one time only. Hey, spider. A brown spider peers down at the man in the cell with little interest. The spider is not interested in hearing about Alexander's problems. It's just set dressing, but they still give it all the, and that's like the only time you see him too, and that's the only time you have to interact with him, and they wrote something for it, because Sierra and King's Quest VI. Doesn't appear to be much in here though. A plain cot is the only furnishing in the stark dungeon cell. Oh, I lied. He's back. Oh, down he goes. Great, he's gonna come over and bite me. It's a brown recluse. The cot looks uncomfortable, not to mention a little dusty. Alexander decides against taking a nap there. Alexander is singularly alone in this dank cell. Even humming doesn't seem like a good idea. Alexander is standing in a dim, damp dungeon cell. The walls and floor are made of gray granite stones. A cot in the corner is the only furniture. A gargoyle peers down maliciously from over the dungeon door. It seems like an unnecessary embellishment for a dungeon to have like a grotesque... An, uh, what's the difference between a grotesque and a gargoyle? A gargoyle actually serves the functional purpose of spouting water, like a drain pipe, and a grotesque is just a decorative one. So it's not a gargoyle, that's a grotesque. Alright, well nothing in here. Let's go check out the other cells just for completion's sake. Psst. Anyone in there? The dungeon cell is empty. It's not. Alexander opens the dungeon door and slips inside. I guess the fact that I could open these doors at all is sort of a hint that they are empty. Ooh, this one's got a chain on the wall. Oh, hi. Mother? Mother, where are you? How come you didn't answer when I called you, you jerk? A spirit weeps inconsolably on the cot. The spirit appears to be the ghost of a little boy. Ah, so remember the ghost mother in the realm of the dead? Yeah. A shackle comprised of a thick iron chain set into a heavy stone block protrudes from the wall. It is perhaps used with particularly difficult prisoners. The spirit seems to need consolation, but Alexander's human hands could provide little comfort for the immaterial ghost. Hmm. Poor little guy. What's the matter, little boy? I'm lost. I can't find my mother. I don't know why she would just leave me here. I've been alone ever so long. Please, sir, I've been alone ever so long. Mother? Mother, where are you? Well, you're not going to find her just by sobbing into a brick wall in the corner, kid. Get out there and look around. You're a ghost. You can float through walls. Is there anything I can do? The ghost continues to weep, ignoring Alexander. All right, but she said if we give her this little ghostly, um, not handkerchief, that's the word. It's like tissue? No. Then he'll magically be able to find his way back and, like, follow his her scent like a bloodhound or something. I don't know. You must be the son of the spirit I met in the realm of the dead. She gave me this handkerchief and asked me to tell you that she's waiting for you there. It's Mama's! 
It even smells like her. I can feel her now. I know where to go. Wait. Before you go, is there anything you can tell me about the castle? I like to play in secret places. In the basement behind the Man of Steel is a door. Nobody except me knows it's there anymore. Farewell. Farewell. I like, even though he's a ghost and go, can go through walls, obviously, he still has to go through the window. Cute touch. There's another dungeon, but I don't think that there's anything in there at all worth How noting. No, it's exactly the same as the other one. All I'm doing is making a lot of noise and telegraphing my presence. Now, he mentioned that there is a secret entrance behind the Man of Steel, and I know what you're thinking, but no, it is just this suit of armor over here. What's this door? There's a strange door on the west wall. There doesn't appear to be any handle or keyhole on the door. Strange indeed. Well, maybe it's like Leisure Suit Larry 7 and you just kind of push it. Alexander doesn't see any way of opening that door manually. Oh. Alexander hears a door off the north hall open. Then, the sound of guard dog footsteps. The footsteps are headed this way. And if this is the north cardinal direction, that means we should quickly move over here. Uh, guard dog? Are you up there? Come on, you said it's coming this way. There he is. Oh, I like that little musical sting. The castle basement is this is the way. The castle this. The castle this. I can't look at him. Can I just talk to him? Hi. The floor. Apparently he does not actually exist. All right. Uh, he's coming this way. I should probably go. Uh, what's in here? There's a door on the east wall. A staircase leads up to a door and presumably another floor of the castle. If memory serves, that goes up to the Great Hall, like the only other part of the castle that we've actually seen. No, no, actually, we haven't actually seen it yet. Alexander decides to evade the guard dog by ducking into another room. He's like a mile over that way. Hey, it's Jello. Alexander hears the guard dog leave the basement. It seems he's safe for the moment. Prince Alexander, I can't believe it. How did you get into the castle? Well, I... Actually, it's a little hard to explain. In the hell. I bet. <laughs> you run the terrible risk of being here, though. The castle is crawling with guard dogs, especially today. The wazir will have your hide if he finds you. I know that, Jalo. But Kasima is being married today. What greater risk is there than that? Of course you're right. Young love. <laughs> I forgot what heartburn it is. But what are you supposed to do about it? I've got to try to see her. Maybe even stop the wedding. Is that all? And here I thought you would try something dangerous. <sighs> Don't worry about me, friend. Just tell me, where is Kasima? As far as I know, she's still in her bedroom upstairs. You'd never make it up there, though. The guard dogs are everywhere, <laughs> and they're very loyal to the crown. Unfortunately, Right now, the crown means El Hazred. The crown is you. If we Look. had proof of something truly afoul, the guard dogs might listen. As it is, they're your enemies, not his. I understand. I've had no lack of enemies since I got here. In fact, you'd almost think I wasn't welcome. <laughs> and they say princes have no sense of humor. <laughs> well, I can see there's no putting you off. For Kasima's sake, I wish you luck. I'll be here if there's anything you need. Thanks, Jalo. Well, Jalo, there is actually something we need. Uh, you're going to be kind of part of our plot. We're going to drag you into this, Jalo. I really hope you don't mind. But we're going to save that for next time. I think we've done quite enough. So next time, let's uh, wrangle Jalo uh, unwillingly into this grand scheme of mine. Uh, rather selfishly, I might add and finish exploring the castle. So until then, as always, good night, jelly beans. Good night.